And that is way, way better than coming 10 times to ask over things that might be for many people not intelligent. So what are the categories that are properties or what are the wealth that are liable for zakat? Scholars make them into four and some make them into five. The most famous are four because the fifth is quite rare. So finding it is not that essential in our lives. So we will mention it either way. The first category, as per the book, is the livestock. So cattle, that includes camels, cows, sheep, goats. These are known as livestock or cattle. And if you want to sacrifice for hajj or for aqiqa, you have to do this with livestock. You cannot bring a horse and sacrifice it for hajj. It has to be one of these categories mentioned earlier. And likewise for aqiqa, you can't bring a hundred chicken and slaughter them and say, this is my aqiqa. It has to be from the livestock. So this livestock has conditions. First of all, it has to reach the threshold known as nisab. And each one's nisab is different than the other. So for example, if I have three camels, no zakat. Four, no zakat. If I have five camels, in this case, I have to give one sheep for every five camels that I have. And if I have nine camels, still, I have to give one sheep. If I have 10 camels, then it goes up an extra sheep, so I have to pay two. Likewise, if I have 14 camels, I have to pay only two sheep. If I have 15 camels, I have to pay three, and so on. So there is a, ta a table stating that for every number of camels, I have to pay so and so. Until it reaches 25, then it goes into camels as zakat instead of sheep. And it has different ages for every number of camels that I have. As for cows, the, the minimum, the threshold is 30 cows. And for every 30, or when, once I reach the number of 30 cows, I have to give a cow, which is known as Tabir. And Tabir is a one-year-old going into his second, and it's, it's called Tabir because it follows its mother wherever it goes. But if I have 40 cows, in this case, I have to give what is known as a musinna, which is thani, which is two years of age. And if I have sheep, if I have 39 sheep that I'm herding, there's no zakat in that. Once it reaches 40, then I have to pay one sheep for that and it goes on up to 120 sheep, then I go on to the second level, etc. It's a bit complicated, but this is what the Prophet taught us والسلام, in terms of giving zakat. And zakat, by the way, is not given on any livestock that you keep. So like if I have a hundred sheep in my barn or on my ranch. Is there any zakat on that? Yeah, Sheikh, you said every 40 you have to give one sheep. Said, no, 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 no. There is a condition that has to be fulfilled, be fulfilled before we have to give zakat. Mm, is it the passing of one lunar year, Sheikh? The answer is no. Okay, Sheikh, I give up. What is it? 
the sheep, the cows, the camels have to be grazing and not fed. Mm, ex explain, please. I'll explain. If I have a hundred sheep on my farm and they are on my farm, they don't have a shepherd to go and take them and graze in the open land from what Allah Azza wa Jal has grown up from the grass, etc. Rather, I buy them food and I bring them water. So they feed from the food, from the grass, from uh, the hay that I bring them every single day. In this case, there is no zakat on it. Because the Prophet made the condition, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that it is sa'ima, grazing, that it goes and eats from Allah's uh, uh, grass that is, uh, 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 that, that is grown on open land. So if it's not grazing, if I am buying trucks of food for it, there's no zakat in it unless it changes into a category that no, is known as urud al-tijara. If I'm trading with it, I am keeping it, I'm taking care of it so that I can sell it in the season of hajj and make money out of that, then there is zakat in it even if it does not reach the threshold. Because now it turned into urud al-tijara. So I hope this clarifies the first category of wealth that requires attention when giving zakat. Of course, not all of, not all of us are ranch owners. Not all of us have cattle. Maybe some of us have not even seen a cow or a camel in their lives. But it is essential to understand and know that we only know about the area we live in, this room I'm in, the neighborhood where I live, my city, as if this is the whole world. And this is not true. There will come a time when everything is back to the future, everything is dependent on livestock, on farming. There won't be any oil, there won't be any plastics, no fossil fuel, no electricity. All these things we've been enjoying for the past two centuries maybe. But before that, and after that, things will go back to its nature. So there will be a time where people's wealth are not measured in billions of dollars or stocks or property, but it would be measured by livestock. And this is why it is important to study it, to understand it, because inevitably it's going to come back one day. The second category of zakatable wealth is gold and silver and what takes their role such as banknotes or currencies. So the verses in the Quran as in chapter 9 of hoarding gold and silver and how it would become a means of torment to those who hoard it, it's clear. The ahadith, it also is clear. And you can go through this section and read the ayat and read the uh, uh, ahadith in it where you can find that this is referring to the issue of gold and silver and whatever counts as them.